I know I'm a bit late with this review, so I'm gonna make it quick, but my gosh, I love this movie. In an age where animation is becoming more and more artistic, unique, and experimental, Mutant Mayhem is yet another awesome addition to the 2D inspired lineup of CG animated films. Now you guys know I'll never let a video go by without praising Spider-Verse, because we really do owe accolades of praise to that movie and how it paved the way for a new generation of animation. Everybody wants a piece of the Spider-Verse art style it seems, Disney being kinda late to the party and really not even looking close to as good as the rest of these movies, something about them adopting this style just feels so limited. Whereas in all these other movies the colors just burst and leap off the screen. This leaves me feeling pretty underwhelmed, sis for real looking like a snapchat filter. And with the recent release of Across the Spider-Verse that has evolved animation even more, adding more 2D elements with a hand painted quality, a really underrated advantage of this style I think is that you can pause it any time and it'll look like something you want to hang up on your wall. Okay, I like it, Picasso. <laughs> and boy does it feel like this movie was coming after Spider-Verse. According to production designer Yashar Kasai, they wanted the movie to feel like it was animated by teenagers. All the little doodles and sketches a teenager might make on the sides of their notebook expanded into a whole movie. There's so many little human touches like the scribbles, outlines, and painterly textures. Now I'm not gonna lie, it took me a few minutes to really adjust to how unhinged and uneven the art style was, but the more I went on in the movie, the more I started to fall in love with how awesomely unique it looked. Much like a David Shannon picture book. All the human characters look really kooky and misshapen. A cross seemed to dabble in this, but this movie took it to a whole new level. I also want to give some credit to Rise, which I miss every day, and I think contributed to TMNT becoming more experimental in its style. Y'all need to shut up, Rise of TMNT's style is wicked cool. But I think one of the main reasons this movie works as well as it does is that you can tell the creators have immense respect for the source material. And I think this really shines through in the casting of actual teenagers to play well actual teenagers. The fact that it's taken Hollywood this long to make such an obvious decision, along with some people's odd reaction to them actually sounding like their age, really shows how off track the presentation of this franchise has become. Don't get me started on Michael Bay's mid 20 something turtles. Seriously, did anybody actually buy them as teenagers? All of this is to say that Mutant Mayhem uses the brother's teenage and well brotherly energy as the lifeblood of the movie. I'm glad we're getting more affectionate versions of the brothers which feels wholesomely natural while also incorporating some good natured teasing and ripping every now and then. This combined with Splinter being displayed as more of a dad than a sensei really seals the deal. Thank you for finally getting Jackie Chan to play Splinter. It makes too much sense. I also can't remember a time I laughed this hard at a movie. Look we're really sorry Splinter, some of the guys wanted to get pizza and I tried to talk him out of it. Yeah. You ratted us out. Hey. Don't use that word that way. I mean, it's 2023. Sorry, right Dad. A lot of the humor is heavily based on pop culture and hip lingo, which makes even the most unsubtle DreamWorks movie look subdued, letting the boys feel like silly and fleshed out teenagers. And because the dialogue is delivered so naturally, probably due to the casting doing recording sessions together, I barely even thought twice about it. Now, how well this movie will age is a bit of a different story. Again, heavy on the meme, Gen Z, and gross out humor, which I can see some people not being crazy about. But it does does feel well balanced because of all the old hip hop and pop culture references from back then, mostly from Superfly who Ice Cube absolutely kills it as. Not a dull line out of this man's mouth. Also my dude Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko, or, or is it Mando, M Mando Gecko, steals absolutely every scene that he's in. We need a Gecko spinoff, I'm calling it. And this new version of April O'Neil surprised me in all the best ways. She's spunky, has her head on straight, and is a good ally to the Turtles. I suppose not every version of April can be like Rises, who is an asset to the Turtles combat wise, but I really enjoyed this April, and her screen time isn't wasted. Though I know there's a lot of whiny middle-aged adults who won't like her for some reason, cough cough wink wink, a decision that I think people waste way too much time and energy and breath on, besides hating on a character for how they look and not their contribution to the narrative, has to be the most textbook definition of petty and superficial. At least this April has more of a plot relevance in being the turtle's key to the human world, but because she's not some model goddess and actually looks like an awkward teenager, that's a bad thing. The only aspect I wasn't crazy about with this April was the romance between her and Leo. Just why? I mean it's technically not bad or overplayed, but why? 
I don't even want to think about what the children will look like. Yeah, that's that's just that's gross. Anyways, as far as actual flaws, like across some scenes and shots can feel a little bit too busy with too much going on. I can and have seen some people dislike how grungy and imperfect it looks, and not every joke hits the way it should. Though props to the tight pacing, which I can see some people preferring over across. And I'm not sure about the ages, but Donnie is supposed to be older than Mikey and is clearly taller but sounds younger. Huh. I can't believe there are other mutants. I like your vibe. I like, I like your, your vibe. vibe. Maybe they're just saying Donnie hit his growth spurt first, but his voice tone didn't follow. I mean, there's a theory. But all in all, this is the next step I've been craving for animation. Slick storytelling, fresh humor, some very creative and immersive action sequences, and soundtracks that go so hard I might even like that a bit better than Spider Verses. It's really cool to see animation become so artistic and 2D inspired again, as I hope different studios will keep pushing the envelope for boldness and style. Also, don't listen to the reviewers spreading hate and negativity about this movie. I mean, they're entitled to their opinion, but I urge you to keep an open mind and give it a try, even if you're not a TMNT fan. Besides, I'm a simple guy. I see someone reference Megamind, I give them some points. But until this franchise takes off some more, y'all can probably catch me watching some more Rise. 8.5 out of 10. We all want a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, but which one can turn you into Squirtle? Move your tongue into a circle, the right spot is universal. Even better if you can have two, lick a tongue would never chew. It slurp you up like a bowl of soup and wouldn't care if you're Leonardo Blue. Hi everybody, I hope you guys are doing well. I mean, I haven't been doing the greatest lately because I was like super super sick for the past week. But I was able to get through it, and I'm here now, so thank you for being patient with me. I saw this movie in a really big theater with the reclining chairs. You know, you get your popcorn, and it was amazing. Honestly, I don't want to go back to a regular theater after that one. But anyways, enough about that. Thanks for listening, and I will see you all soon. Bye.